All right, hold it steady. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Was that the shark screaming? Please tell me it wasn't screaming. <laughs> What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Yes, that's right, we're back with another movie commentary and today we have got a right goodie for you. I've been meaning to do this one for a little while now but I just haven't got around to it. It is of course Jaws 2. The film does feature some of the original cast from the first film, although it's not directed by the powerhouse in film, Steven Spielberg. I actually haven't seen the film for years and years, so I think it's going to be quite fun to watch it again. Before we start today, though, I wanted to point you in the direction of the Shark Bites community tab. Please do head over to the community tab to get some behind the scenes info on the channel and all of the research that I'm doing on sharks at the moment. We do have a fair few people over there already on the community tab, so thank you to all of you, but based on the number of people that are watching these videos, I'm sure we we could get a few more. Oh yeah, there's also the weekly feature on the community tab, which is Watch Art Wednesday, where you yourself can try your hand at species identification. What's not to love about that? Also, really quickly, if you enjoy these movie commentaries, guys, please, please do give them a like. They take me absolutely ages to make. So if you could click that like button, it'd be massively appreciated by me. Right, enough of that. It's time to grab your favorite beverage, sit back, relax, and enjoy this movie commentary of Jaws 2 with a real life shark scientist. So we're starting here with these two divers who have somehow inadvertently stumbled upon the shipwreck of the orca, which was Quint's boat that was basically smashed to bits by the first shark. But pretty quickly here, after posing around the boat for a little bit, they are well and truly rinsed by a massive shark. I guess looking at this from a shark scientist perspective, you could say the electrical impulses coming from those cameras could have easily drawn that shark in, initially maybe. I do think it's possible. Sharks are seriously adapted to pick on any electrical impulses or low frequency sounds in the water. It's pretty well documented in the shark world. And they're usually coming from prey species that might be injured or dying. Have you met my son, Larry? No, no. Uh, Larry Jr. Uh, Larry, would you get over here, please? Jesus, look at the monobrow on Vaughn's son. <laughs> that is a beast of a slug on his forehead. <laughs> Also, of course, Mayor Vaughan has called his son by his own name. That's such a Mayor Vaughan thing to do. <laughs> right, okay, so we've got some parasailing here. Now, if you'd have asked me a year ago if you were at risk from a shark bite as a result of parasailing, I would have laughed and said no chance. That was until I was completely proved wrong by a video that went viral at some point last year of a dude getting his foot bitten off by a shark somewhere in the Red Sea. I shouldn't really laugh because the shark literally jumped out of the water and bit this guy's foot. And then I had to eat my words and hold my hands up and say, I got that one wrong. I won't lie, I still do think it's very, very unlikely that this will happen. And you'd really have to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But still, it has happened. <laughs> So in this situation here, it's entirely possible the shark gets this guy splashing into the water, although it looks like he's just about managed to get above the surface before the shark gets him. Lucky boy. After failing to get the parasailing dude, the shark turns its attention to water skiing Gal, who is traveling at some speed here, unaware that the shark is after her. Although my main issue here is that I don't think the shark can keep up with the speed of water skiing Gal, particularly over the time frame that we're seeing here. Great whites generally cruise the ocean at around five miles per hour, although most of the time they're probably cruising at speeds lower than that. And that's because it's really, really important for sharks to save their energy. Yes, okay, they can reach speeds of up to 30 miles an hour, but that's in very short bursts and not over a prolonged period of time like we're seeing here. That water skier has got to be going at what, at least 25, 30 miles an hour, pretty consistently. So I'm not buying that the shark can catch up with her here. Alas though, it does and water skiing gal becomes another casualty. Her water skiing companion, aka boat driving gal, I guess, realizes she's lost her and stops to take a look, but not before the shark decides to have a good old chomp on the side of the boat, as you do. <laughs> what on earth is going on here? <laughs> She's literally just covered herself and the boat in petrol and then thinks it'd be a great idea to grab the flammable flare gun and shoot the now even more flammable petrol. <laughs> what? Of course, the boat then ignites, burning the shark and herself before the whole thing blows up into a fiery inferno. <laughs> Honestly, in this situation, my first thought would not be blow myself up. <laughs> She has got it horribly, horribly wrong here. <laughs> At least it semi-charred the shark, though. Ooh, okay, what have we got here, then? A very chomped-on killer whale. Interesting. Hold on a minute. How have the others on that beached boat over there not noticed this massive killer whale, like, 30 feet away from their boat? <laughs> 
Bro should have definitely gone to Specsavers. So I think it's being suggested here the wounds inflicted on this killer whale are as a result of a large shark, which again, unfortunately, I'm not buying. We know that killer whales occasionally do predate on white sharks and that's so that they can eat their fatty livers. Make sure you check out the episode we did on that, by the way. You can either click that link in the top corner or wait until the end screen. So killer whales eat white sharks, but it's very, very rarely the other way around. Yes, okay, a large great white might be able to take down a juvenile killer whale, but the issue is that killer whales swim in pods. They're social animals. So any threat a juvenile killer whale might face, it's going to be pretty quickly dealt with by the adult members of that pod. This also looks like a pretty large killer whale as well. And I think they say in this scene, it's seven and a half meters. That's 24 feet. So it's definitely an adult individual. I just can't see any great white shark taking down a killer whale of that size. It just doesn't add up for me. Oh, you little bastard. <laughs> Forgot about that one. How could I forget that happened? It's a half decent jump scare. Okay, it's no Ben Gardner, but it's not that far off. Or maybe I'm just a massive wimp. <laughs> so Chief Brody, in a moment of insanity, thinks he's spotted a shark from the watchtower and decides it would be a great idea to run across the beach waving his gun around like an absolute madman. <laughs> Before then shooting narrowly past a small child trying to get out of the water, <laughs> he has lost his mind. <laughs> it obviously turns out it's not a giant shark. It's a simple shoal of bluefish. Major error here from Brody. Major error. This is why it's not very good to obsess over a shark. Saying that though, I'm pretty obsessed with sharks. And then again, I'm not running across a beach waving a gun around. Well, each to their own, I guess. <laughs> of course, Brody goes on to get the sack for this alongside other shark related outbursts, but I just wanted to pause this shot here to show you a little Easter egg. This yellow planter here on the front of his porch is not just a yellow planter. It's actually one of the yellow barrels from the first film used to try and keep Jaws at the surface. This one is probably one of the barrels he and Hooper swam back in with after the orca sank. I love this little elongated stare at the barrel from Brody as well, just before he ends up going into the house. Don't you just love a little Easter egg? Okay, we've got some more recreational divers here. Now, the divers haven't been doing very well so far on this film, so I'm not holding out much hope for the survival of these two here. <laughs> Why has he just assaulted that lobster? <laughs> Bit harsh. He doesn't even have a bag to put his lobster in. So he's literally just decided to touch up that lobster. I reckon that's definitely a real one as well. You can see here though, just how dodgy these dive conditions are. You've got murky water with poor visibility and you're diving in kelp beds, which is a known area where great whites like to mooch around. This is a recipe for a shark attack. <laughs> there you go. Char Jaws sneaks up and scares the shit out of this diver who's decided to take his regulator out his mouth and shoot for the surface, which is a surefire way to give yourself a gas embolism or decompression illness. He's had a torrid time here. Poor old chap. After harassing the recreational diver group, instead of taking down any of the other 10 divers that went into the water, Char Jaws decides he's going to head a bit further afield and harass the teenagers out on their yachts. Eddie here, not really sure which one he is, to be honest. There's just so many of them. <laughs> anyway, he finds himself in the water and ends up in a bad situation with the shark. He, of course, gets bitten and then ragged around through the water, kind of like how Chrissy did at the start of the first film. And then just for shits and gigs, instead of eating him there and then, Char Jaws decides he's going to smash Eddie's head right into the side of the sailing yacht. <laughs> what a little savage. <laughs> After consuming Eddie, Char Jaws decides it's time to terrorize more of the kids and attacks their little raft armada with everything he's got. Pure carnage, of course, ensues as he decides to ram every single raft in the vicinity. <laughs> Michael bonks his head on the sail boom and he's out cold. And then he tries to 180 flip this yacht, sending screaming teenagers flying into the water. <laughs> this is just pure chaos here. Pure unaltered chaos. <laughs> Fortunately for the kids though, Amity Harbour Patrol helicopter is on hand to come and save the day by towing them to Cable Island, which is not too far away from where they are. Although again, Char Jaws isn't having any of this as he bites down on the helicopter and quickly sinks it. <laughs> I'm not convinced a shark would end up going for something as bulky as a helicopter, although I guess it kind of is a small one, so I suppose it could happen. It's still unlikely, I reckon, but after the whole parasailing shark bitten foot guy, anything could happen.
The scene in the film does end there, although there's a deleted scene that I've managed to get my hands on from the Daily Jaws, which is a great organization, by the way, guys. You should definitely go and subscribe to their YouTube channel if you want some more Jaws content. And in this deleted scene, we get to see exactly what's going on under the water with the pilot and charred Jaws as it continues its pursuit in chomping down on this guy, smashing its head through the glass to get to him. It cuts before we get to see any real gnarly stuff, but apparently it was deleted to try and reduce the overall gore of the film and the rapidly increasing body count because a lot of people who watched the first film just weren't happy with it. I definitely would have kept this in though. It's not that gory. Okay, after some brief respite, we've got more shots here of kids falling into the water. You'd think by now they'd realize that the safest thing to do is sit down and hold on to something for dear life. <laughs> like, come on guys. You gotta learn your lesson at some point. <laughs> and the mistake unfortunately doesn't pay off for this girl. I'm not sure which one it is, to be honest. <laughs> She's brutally consumed right in front of little Sean's eyes. That's gonna stick with him for the rest of his life. Grim. Sorry. All right, hold it steady. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Was that the shark screaming? Please tell me it wasn't screaming. <laughs> oh no. I haven't even mentioned the roaring shark scenes from this film so far, but this isn't even a roar. It's a scream. <laughs> Why have they done this? I think this is probably one of the very few things that really winds me up about shark films. But this one here, this one beats the lot. <laughs> Charred Jaws doing his best. Here's Johnny impression from The Shining here. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I've got to edit that in. Here's Johnny. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist it. Also, my God, this girl screaming. She's been doing a lot of this over the last 15 minutes of the film. You'd think she'd have lost her voice somewhat. Is it bad that I kind of want her to get munched by charred jaws? I feel kind of bad. I've got to be honest, I guess. More people are flapping around in the water now, and this girl fortunately only gets a little scrape. It is a great demonstration, though, of how rough shark skin is. Like I've said before in some of these videos, shark skin is easily rough enough to cut you. Although it doesn't really look like the shark actually touches her in this shot. I'll let them off, though, because they've decided to include some real factual shark information here. Bonus points for you, directors. <laughs> Climax of the film here as Brody lures the shark in and gets him to chomp down on this electrical wire. <laughs> so that electrical cable has turned charred jaws into well and truly burnt to a crisp jaws in about 10 seconds. <laughs> that is some overdone shark. <laughs> Smart thinking from Brody there, though. I guess it's officially Brody 2 Shark Nil which isn't a bad record for a guy that's frightened of the water. <laughs> Considering he's also lost his job, I feel like his shark hunting CV is starting to look pretty good now. <laughs> I'm not endorsing shark hunting, by the way. <laughs> and there we go, guys. That was Jaws 2. It's been years and years and years since I've seen that film. And you know what? It's actually not that bad. Yeah, okay, it's not as good as the first film, but I think compared to Jaws 3 and 4, it's considerably better than those. Right. Let's get some scores on the board. I think for realism, in classic 1970s fashion, they do tend to get a few things wrong, but that shark skin thing was in there, so I think I'm gonna give it a five. And then overall entertainment, it's not fantastic, but it's not that bad either, so I think I'm gonna go with the five again. What did you think of Jaws 2 then? Did it stoke some memories of seeing it in the cinema back in the 1970s or when you were a kid? Is it one of your favorite all-time shark films? Does it live up to the original film? I wanna hear all your thoughts in the comments below. Also remember to keep suggesting films for me to do in the comments section, and I promise I will eventually get around to doing them. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. These movie commentaries take me ages and ages to do, so a simple thumbs up goes a really long way. And if you're not subscribed to Shark Bites yet, make sure you click that big red subscribe button below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.